Hey guys, welcome to Kemi Friends. Akshay here and long time no see. Well, I have been a bit busy so the frequency of our videos have become a bit less. No worries, we will continue giving you good quality content and uh, yeah, one of our previous videos you might have seen how we numerically integrated the design equations for a batch reactor system uh, using MATLAB and we coded them, right? But there's another way of numerically integrating uh, differential equations and that is using a, an awesome tool of MATLAB called as Simulink. So this video is basically made so that you guys get familiar with the Simulink environment and get started with a relatively easy problem. So let's begin. Okay, so let's look at the question. Uh, it's a question you're already familiar with if you've been following our channel. And uh, you can either pause the video to look at the question or uh, you can see a PDF version which is saved in the drive and you can access it. So we have elementary liquid phase reaction as we all remember. A gives B gives C where it doesn't matter what A, B and C are. And uh, what we had to do was to determine the maximum concentration of B and the time at which the concentration of B reaches a maximum value. And we were given some uh, parameter values and we had to also find the volume when CB is at maximum concentration. So we are done with the question and uh, like we all remember how these equations were derived for the material balance of the batch reactor. Um, you can uh, check the previous video to learn in detail how these equations were uh, obtained. But I think at this point uh, these are fairly elementary questions and uh, the derivation is uh, not uh, it's quite trivial the derivation so we have dca by dt this is equation one we have uh, db dcb by dt equation two and uh, dcc by dt equation three so let's uh, go to the simulation environment for simulink and uh, let's get it okay so first things first uh, let's open simulink so to open Simulink, you can either uh, click on Apps and uh, Simulink will be somewhere over here. It's, it's one of these. And uh, else you can just type Simulink and press Enter. So, okay, we have uh, the Simulink uh, startup page and let's click on Blank Model. Alright, so we have a blank model here. Okay, so now let's get this to full screen and... Uh, we will care about the equation number one as you can see on the screen here okay so that's equation number one so first we will look how to look at how to solve uh, ca so we'll first you, you need to double click and you can select whichever block you want to open so addition to doing the double click uh, button to look for uh, uh, appropriate blocks you can also click on the library browser here where you can find a variety of blocks for uh, different application. So you can see commonly used blocks which is these blocks and uh, yeah so there are many ways uh, there are many blocks uh, you can that you can select based on your application. Alright so to begin with I'll start with gain. So since we have a k1 multiplier which is the rate constant so the value of rate constant for uh, the first uh, equation is 0 0.4 and uh, since there is a negative sign in front of uh, 0 in front of k so i will write constant here and uh, let's put the constant value as negative 1 okay so we have constant value of negative 1 and uh, we need a multiplier so that we can multiply the two Right, so we'll put multiply and uh, attach this. So as you can see in Simulink, you can just click on the output and uh, connect it to the input, and uh, it'll just uh, automatically connect uh, each other. So next we, right? So next we'll create another block called as the integrator. So the initial condition of our our uh, CA is 5 mol per liter, right? So we have 5 mol per liter. So we want to uh, 
so we have negative k1 into negative k1 into ca ca will understand how we obtain so so what we'll do is uh, we'll put a scope over here so what is scope used for scope is used for uh, you know looking at so we have three outputs right so we'll keep the number of input ports as three and uh, uh, by three output I mean we have to see how uh, concentration of A changes with respect to time, concentration of B changes with respect to time and how concentration of C is changes with respect to time. So we will integrate the equation but the key thing is that uh, we will take uh, the value of CA over here since CA depends on uh, these two factors as well. So we will have to multiply CA into k1 ca and this gets integrated and we can uh, numerically compute how concentration of a changes with, with respect to c so let's call this ca and uh, maybe later we would want to export the value of ca how it changes with respect to time on uh, matlab so what we'll do is we'll just uh, assign an out one port out one port is uh, used to export this into the main MATLAB environment. So before uh, moving ahead with equation number two and three, uh, let's uh, first uh, might as well run the first equation and see whether we have uh, done it all correctly and see if we get the expected uh, behavior of the model. So uh, in order to remain consistent with uh, the time domain uh, of the previous of the coding that we have done we took uh, from time t0 to t15 so let's again type 15 over here and uh, to run this we'll have to click here this button green run all right so we'll run this okay it has run and uh, uh, in order to view the simulation result we'll click on this scope Okay, so you can see that uh, the initial value, the concentration of CA is equal to 5 and it is reducing all the way to 0 as uh, time proceeds. So this is expected behavior of uh, the reaction. Uh, and if you can see here, uh, you will see which method is being used. So auto is uh, OD45. Uh, so we have used the same uh, solver in our uh, coding example. And uh, if you like, this is the sink all right out one remember that so um, this is used to transfer whatever data is produced in your simulating environment into the matlab environment so let's open the matlab environment here and you can see t out and uh, t out ranges from 0 to 15 that's the time and if you see y out and uh, you can see the values you will see how ca varies from uh, t equals 0 to t equals 15 so it's almost nil uh, when t equals 15 right so that's quite uh, in line with uh, what uh, graph we saw here so let's move on to equation number two equation number two deals with how uh, the concentration of b changes with respect to time and as you can see on the right hand side there are two uh, there are two aspects with rate of change of concentration of B changes with respect to CA which is given by K1 CA and how the rate of change of C concentration of CB changes with respect to CB itself. So uh, we already have the gain for uh, CA so we'll be just using this stream later on so let's focus on uh, minus K2 CB alright so let's again put another gain and in this case uh, k2 is equal to 0 0.2 per minute and uh, subtract this and add this stream right in order to get the right hand side so we'll write add right so we'll do add but the list of signs is uh, plus and minus because we need to subtract the kb the K, K to CB term, right? So we'll just do apply and uh, we'll drag this. You should you should right click on this one, alright? If you want to 
you know take a stream from an already existing stream right click and connect and uh, similarly not similarly you need to left click here and uh, connect it here so this will be uh, plus k1ca and this will be minus k1ca rather cb k2cb right this will be plus k1ca and this will be k2cb minus k2cb right so we'll move ahead and again put an integrator because we need to integrate the combination of these two variables and initial condition of cb is zero so we'll write cb equals zero and connect these two right and uh, the value of the results of the integration we want to observe so we'll attach it to the scope over here right but at the same time uh, we need some input for the integrator so we'll right click again on uh, the stream cb and connect it here and let's name this stream cb all right so let's call this cb all right so this this loop deals with uh, equation number two and now uh, in order to deal with equation number three it's all very simple because uh, uh, on the right hand side of equation three we have uh, k2cb so this 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 stream will be equal to k2cb so what we'll do is we'll add another integrator so, so this is for equation number three, uh, which integrates uh, DCA, uh, DCC by DT, and uh, the right hand side is K2CB. So the initial condition is zero. So, so CC species is zero initially, and uh, first let's connect the output, and uh, the input would be this stream because uh, this gives K2C. CB, right? The rate of appearance of uh, the species C is directly proportional to K2CB. So we have put in all three inputs into the scope, and uh, oh yeah, forgot to mention, forgot to add that this is CC. All right, so we have added three streams, which is integrated into the scope, and uh, Let's also add the sink. So we'll write out one. So this is the sink for the CB. And uh, let's add another sink for CC. So out one again. You can also copy paste blocks, but uh, I'm not doing that here for clarity purposes. All right. So we have out three for uh, CC. And uh, let's run this. Okay, it's already done and uh, let's click on scope. So as uh, you can see here, it's very much in line with how we had got the previous graph. So I don't, I will, okay, I'll just uh, keep the previous graph over here so that uh, you, you can compare. So you can see the previous graph over here and this is the new graph so as you can see these are pretty much identical because they are the same equation and we have achieved the same uh, thing using simulink without coding much and just using uh, block representations uh, to simulate batch reactor okay so now we have to address the main question uh, which is to uh, determine the maximum concentration of b and time at which concentration of B reaches maximum value as well as finding the volume when CB is at maximum concentration. So let's get back to the MATLAB environment and uh, if you remember we used the sync here 1, 2 and 3 in order to record and uh, send this back into our MATLAB environment. So we have T out here and uh, in, the, in this case the data set will give us three different variables namely C, A, C, B and C, C and uh, we can manipulate this so first first things first we need to find uh, where cb is at its maximum so in order to do that let's uh, use the max function we are uh, done with the simulation of the simulic model but uh, we haven't still addressed the questions asked in the question so okay so this is the first question 
So we need to determine the maximum concentration of B and time when concentration of B reaches maximum value. All right. So uh, as you remember, we have uh, used a sink to transfer all this data back into the MATLAB uh, file, right? So we have uh, Y out. So yeah. So first, first things first. Uh, let's let's assign a value called CB van. So we need to find the maximum, uh, the time at which uh, the value of concentration of CB is maximum. So for that, we we'll assign CB van is equal to. Uh, so this is this is called Y out. So we we'll call it Y out dot get element and uh, under get element we'll write cb because we want to extract that right so we'll write cb and yeah all right so we have we have defined a variable called cb val and uh, this is ordered to extract uh, the values within the data which is synced from the simulating model all right first we need to extract the values of uh, values of the concentration CB itself. So let's call them G. So G is equal to CB val dot values dot data because we need to extract the data, right? So uh, the data of the concentration will be stored in a variable G. And next, uh, we will find uh, what's the maximum G, uh, what is the maximum value which is reached by CB. So we write CB equals max of G. And what's the max of G? Uh, so that's 2.499. And uh, we'll have to find time at which the maximum value is reached. So we write T max equals uh, T max equals uh, T out, which is the time between which we have integrated the values as you can see here ranges from 0 to 15 so one thing we'll uh, we'll know that the number of uh, rows in uh, time will be equal to the number of concentration rows obviously i mean i'm just stating the obvious sometimes because i just like everything to be clear right so t out equals t equal equal so this will uh, enable us to find out at what instant is uh, the CB is CB is maximum. So T max, uh, if I remember right, was uh, 2.4 or 3.4, something like that. Oh right, it was 3.4. Uh, this I remember from the previous uh, video. And uh, moving on to the next part is we have to find the volume when CB as it is at it. So for the maximum concentration, we'll just have to multiply T max into the volumetric flow rate, which was equal to 50 liter per minute. So that will be equal to 160, right? That's what the question is asking, right? Find the volume when, yeah, right. So we know that the volumetric flow rate is 50 liter per minute, and we know the time at which uh, CB reaches at its maximum, so we just multiply the two, we get 168. So I hope you guys liked this video and gave you that teeny bit of motivation to learn Simulink because uh, personally I was never taught Simulink and I used online resources to learn Simulink, right? So uh, also don't forget to like, share and subscribe and please do follow our Instagram page. Thank you. Bye.